Okay, so at this point, if you were following along with me, we created an account. We edited our profile a little bit, and I made my first tweet. Let's look at the anatomy of the Twitter account so that we can use it effectively. At the top left corner, we have these four links, these four menu items, home, moments, notifications, and messages. Click on home. On my case, I have a little red dot there. Yours might be a different color just because I changed the color of my design. Mine's red, but yours might be a different color. But uh, I'm going to click home. And what that does is it takes me back to my main home timeline. If I've got Facebook, you might know that you can look at your Facebook account in different ways. One is your profile, one is your home timeline or your wall. Uh, you're looking at the stuff that people posted on Facebook. The home screen is just like that. I, in my case, I am following 34 accounts. So whenever those 34 accounts on Twitter post something, whenever they tweet something, I can see their tweets. That's the big reason I want followers. When I tweet something, and so far I've tweeted one thing, but when I tweet something and I've got five followers, those five followers could see my tweet. If I've got 500 followers, more people can see the tweet. It's not just good enough that they see it, they need to act upon it. We'll get to that. But I'm following 34 accounts, so Fox5 San Diego tweeted that. Um, Food and Wine Magazine tweeted this. CNN tweeted that. Mashable tweeted this. So all of this stuff that these accounts are um, tweeting, I can see it. But wait a minute, I also see some things of accounts that I never followed. I don't remember following Cameron Joseph. You'll notice this one is marked as Mashable retweeted. I followed Mashable, but Mashable thought it was interesting enough to see someone else's tweet and they shared it. They retweeted it. So now their followers, which is like six million or whatever it was, also see that tweet. Cameron himself only has 5,900 followers, but he got retweeted by Mashable. So six million people saw his tweet, not just those 5,000 that follow him. That's one of the big reasons also I want to get followers because I could have some followers that have a lot of followers themselves and if I have 10 followers and I tweet something but one of those followers has a thousand followers my tweet reached 1010 people potentially. So I want to get retweets. I want to get shared to more people. We'll see how to do that. But the home screen is where you're going to see the latest tweets of the accounts that you're following, and your own tweets too. If I tweet something somewhere here, my own tweet's going to show up somewhere. But the thing about Twitter is that stuff comes out on a regular basis, so you might, uh, you know, you might lose it. You might have to scroll back a little bit. But home screen shows the latest tweets. Um, We've got this lightning bolt, Moments, if you click on Moments. What Twitter did recently is um, get into the curation business in a museum. What does a curator do? Oversees the museum to show certain styles of painting or whatever. Curation in social media is something that's happening more and more because there's 320 million whatever accounts on Twitter. There's a billion accounts on Facebook. There's also 400 million Instagram accounts. There's lots of content on all of these networks. You're going to be buried under all of this content. So what Twitter is engaging in is curation. It's checking what's the pulse of things, what's important. All the networks, all the social networks right now are all about the final state of the union of President Obama. So everyone's tweeting about it, everyone's Facebooking it, everyone's Google Plusing it, Instagramming it. It's big news right now. And so they're curating it and other things, such as the thing going on with perhaps the Chargers going to LA and such. So that's, uh, that's important at the moment. Um, live game in the NBA, something about television. So this is curated content on a particular topic. Um, the point of this curated content moments 
people are engaging with this content, people are reading this, tweeting it, tweeting about it, following it. We'll see a little bit later, but Moments is very useful to try to get more followers because this shows the people that are active. We'll see it in more depth a little later. I'm going to skip notifications for the moment, but Messages then is the direct messages feature of Twitter because by default everything that you tweet on Twitter and you have a button right at the top right to tweet whenever you want but whatever you tweet by default is public anyone can find it anyone can search it anyone can use it against you so you have private messaging on Twitter you can send a direct message a private message to your followers to your friends and family that only they will see. So this is very valuable for businesses because this happens all the time in that a customer is grumpy and they start to tweet about their grumpiness on Twitter and everyone's gonna see it. Everyone's gonna see them trashing your company. What you could do is reach out to them and say, let's take this privately to help us better fulfill your needs, to better fix your problem. So now you're doing customer service with them privately, so all that dirty laundry isn't out there for everyone to see. And it happens and it works. Because a few years ago, I took a trip to Las Vegas during Christmas time, and I flew Delta. When I came back, somewhere over Nevada, California border, somewhere up in the air, I checked my, I checked my uh, email. And I got an email that says my flight from LA to San Diego had been canceled. So we were up in the air, and I was seeing as soon as we landed, we were going to have a hard time getting back to San Diego. So as, as soon as I figured that out, I started to tweet to Delta. So the Delta Twitter account, everyone's got a Twitter account. I started to tweet to the Delta account, what's going on here, what, all of that. And they got back to me, better customer service than trying to get them on the phone. And then later on, when other things, other more negative things happened, I kept complaining on, on, in public. And then eventually they said, let's take this private. And then they eventually got a refunded ticket and all of that. So that's worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. Best case scenario is that this is a place for you to contact your, your followers, your customers one-on-one -on -one to deal with their issues, to give them enticements, to give them rewards, um, to, to get leads for follow-ups and such. Direct messages. Don't put it out all in public. Talk privately. Um, and then notifications. If you click on notifications, did you see that mine had a little red number one? I forgot to ask. How many of you, did any of you had a little red number or a little number on your notification bell? A few people, okay. That means you got a notification. Something happened on Twitter regarding you. Notifications is the screen where I can see who followed me, who chatted with me, um, who asked me a question, who sent me a picture, Notifications. Um, I got a notification from Follow BS Lin, BSE India. Um, I got a notification that they they talked to me. They chatted with me. They said, "Hi, Victor's Bakery. Request you to follow. Thank you." Well, in short, that's spam. Some spammer saw me that I'm brand new on Twitter. They sent me this message. They want me to follow them. I'm not going to follow them. Um, this screen, though, usually will get you better results than this. This is where someone is going to be replying. Let's say I tweeted a question to my followers. How many are you interested in us selling um, pecan pie? Let's say we don't sell pecan pie in Victor's Bakery. So I ask a question. How many of you would like to buy pecan pie? This is where I would get the replies. If then I got some new followers, it would list it here. John Smith followed you. If I got a reply, it would show the re reply. This is, this, these are the notifications. Like on Facebook, on the top right corner, where you see those little red numbers of follows and friend requests and such, it's, it's listed all here under notifications. I had one notification, that one. Did anyone else also get this same one? Okay. So this particular account has some filter that's searching for probably the my first tweet hashtag. And we'll see how we can do that. We'll see how we can 
wait for keywords and use them for good, of course, not for spam. We'll talk about that a little later. How can we have a filter to search for keywords for us? Yes? So you said that was spam. What's your definition? Just a business wanting anybody to read their stuff? Or nope. What? A business that has nothing to do with what my business is about or what I would care about. Um, their little icon looks like a financial website. There's a little stock market and a bull. Um, I have to, hate to say it, but bad grammar is also a mark of spam. And then if you put your mouse on top of an account, usually it pops up with a little biography. Let me see what we see. The, there's no graphic filled in at the top. Again, those that, are, that really care fill in their account properly. No biography, no background graphic. Um, lots and lots and lots of tweets. That's often a sign of a spammer without a correlation of followers. If they were really that valuable, if their tweets were that valuable, they'd have more followers. More people would want to pay attention. There's a relatively low amount of followers to tweets. So just a lot of indicators that I'm seeing that this so would not be spam. They're necessarily evil people. They just aren't, they're just trying to dig a business by using whatever methods they found. Yeah. They're trying to get followers too, to sell them whatever their thing is. That's also a terrible tweet. Why would I follow them? I don't understand what they're about at all. Their, their name here is follow BSE India, and then their username right here is 10HD Ferrer. They don't match, and that's not a bad thing, but again, I'm not getting... You'll see it as you use Twitter more and more. You'll start to sniff out the spam easily, but I see right away that this is a spam account. Let's um, let's do something here that might be useful before we start using Twitter. Let's go to the top right. Let's click again on your profile and settings icon. Let's look at settings. Notice this is also where you can log out, where you can also check help. There's keyboard shortcuts built in, something called lists, which we might talk about later. Let's go to settings. There's lots of settings here, but one of, a couple that you might really care about. Username. This is where you change that unique username that only one account in the world can have, which is also your Twitter address. So if you want to change that Twitter address, it's under settings. Limited number of spaces. It's also limited. I already ran out of space. I believe it's 15. 15 characters. No spaces, no special characters and such. This is where I can change my email address if I need to, the language of my account, and the time zone. I won't go through every setting. You, you should look at them your own, and they're pretty straightforward. If, it, if the setting doesn't make sense, there's help. But I do want to mention a couple settings over here. Under the left side, click on Email Notifications. At the moment, when you create a brand new Twitter account, everything that you do, you'll basically get an email from. Whenever you get a new follower, whenever someone likes your tweet, anyone mentions or chats with you on Twitter, you get emails. Everything is turned on. You might feel you're getting way too emails from Twitter. So you can turn off and say, okay, don't send me an email when someone likes my tweet you'll still get the notification up on this little bell when you're logged into Twitter. But if you also don't want it on your inbox, you can turn it off. You can turn them all off. You only want to see your notification when you're in Twitter. You don't want it to clutter your inbox. This is up to you to decide. Maybe leave it on as a beginner just to see the kinds of notifications you get in your inbox and then maybe you might like them, you may find them useful. If you're advanced, you can set up filters in your email address to do things when you get a certain email. But notice you're going to get lots of emails from lots of possible actions. So you can turn them on or off, and you can say, email me when someone likes my tweet, tailored for me or by anyone. This and on another screen will make a little more sense but tailored for you means I'm following certain accounts, so I only want to get emails about those accounts. 
if I set it to anyone, I'll get an email from any Twitter account that interacted with me in any of these ways. So if I didn't follow that BSC India account, I wouldn't get the email that says you got a new tweet. But if I put it to anyone, I would. Let's leave these tailored for the moment because on another screen, web notifications, this is where I would say change these all to by anyone. Give me a notification. In Twitter, this is what this screen is, web notifications, when I'm logged into Twitter here, give me a notification up on my bell whenever my tweets are retweeted, meaning shared, whenever someone likes my tweet, whenever someone replies to me or follows me or direct, message me, direct messages me, give me a little number up here for me to see I've got new activity. And I'm saying by anyone, because as a beginner I want to be on top of this. I want to know everything that's going on. As I start to build followers and more serious followers and as I get better at this, I might want to change it to Taylor, because this is how the celebrities stay sane. The celebrities that have a million followers, 30 million followers, they have it set like that so that their bell doesn't have 1,000 on it every day. So that they only get the notifications related to those that they really want to get notified by. The connections that they've chosen to approve, basically. As a beginner, to start off I would say, give me notifications by anyone. Because you never know, someone that you're not connected to may reach out to you and wants to hire you. But because you're not connected, you won't get the notification until a week later when you notice, hey, there was a number one there. And the thing about Twitter is that it is, it is in contrast to Facebook, where if you use Facebook for personal, it's one-to-one. -one. I make a friend request to someone, we both approve it, we're both connected. We have a one-to-one -one relationship. Whenever I post something, they see it. Whenever they post something, I see it, one-to-one. -one. Twitter is not like that. Other networks are not like Facebook. I can have a thousand followers, but that doesn't mean I need to follow back all 1,000. I can have all those followers, and I can be following 12 of them, 12 of the really interesting, 12 of the really useful ones. So it's a one-to-many connection on Twitter. I can have many connections, and I don't have to follow them all. On Facebook, everyone that I'm connected to on my personal account, it's because I know them. It's because I'm friends or family. It's a one-to-one -one relationship. So there's many other settings you can look at here. Uh, your Twitter data, data mobile, find friends, that's where you connect your email address to find more accounts. I'm looking in the design portion of this, and I pick a pre-made theme. I'm not sure why it's not up there. Let's not get uh, sidetracked on that, okay, just, okay. just yet. Um, so this, these are the only settings I really want to look at at the moment. You can look at the, at the other ones. Maybe also if you want to change your password, it's there. But let's actually talk about using Twitter. There's, that's, the big, that's the big thing. So let's click back on our home screen. And um, this is where we always get this catch-22, this conundrum. Should I tweet right now, but I have no followers? Notice my stats say I've got one tweet following no followers. Should I tweet now and no one's going to pay attention? Or should I try to get followers first? The reason I'm saying that's a conundrum is because if I try to get followers right now, I probably won't get followers because my account is not fully set up and I haven't tweeted anything of importance. All of these accounts that I followed, they had, they had stuff that I would care to see. But my account, I've got one tweet and it's only setting up my Twitter. I don't have anything important to entice people to follow me. So before I try to go through the tactic of getting followers, I recommend, and what I do for clients, is we tweet stuff to no one first. Then when we try to get followers, they will see our content and be more enticed to follow. 
So we're going to tweet some things first. Do you notice we always have a tweet button at the top right, or if I'm on the home screen, I have this what's happening. I have this tweet button. I'm on the home screen, let's click on what's happening. Whatever, if yours says something else, just click on it. But we're going to make a tweet. We're going to post a tweet. And it tells me you have 140 characters to work with. We have some other little things here. We'll look at them in a moment. What's happening? Let's do a plain text tweet. I'm going to say, we are happy to finally be on Twitter. As you're typing, you're getting this countdown. When that runs out, when you go past the limit, when you go past the limit, your text becomes red. When you pass the limit, you can't tweet. So you have 140 characters to put your message across at the moment. Well, always think in terms on any social media, because you'll see that whatever tactics I give you for Twitter also apply to the other networks with some variations. But always think, whenever you post anything to social media, think in terms of what's in it for your followers. Um, why would they care? We are finally happy to be on Twitter. So what? I want to further say, follow us for exclusive coupons you can't find anywhere else. Some sort of enticement to follow. One reason, give a reason in your tweet, why would someone follow, why would someone care? Think of in terms of what's useful to your audience. When this school tweets, it's tweeting about our upcoming classes, about our majors, about our graduation ceremony and such, stuff that our followers would care about. Not simply like, look at that nice sunset. That's nice, but you really want to think about it in terms of what would your followers care about. But this is also a balancing act. You don't always want to be tweeting sales pitches. You don't always want to be about buy this, buy that, follow that, read this. You don't always want to do the hard sell. That's a balancing act as well. I can't really give you a percentage on that. I said 80-20% your content and other people's content. I can't exactly give you a percent about sales content and fun content or frivolous content. It's up to you to decide. But I would say don't always post something about sale, 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 buy, 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 subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. You're going to put people off and they're going to unfollow you. If your account is always about selling them something. So I'm going to click Tweet. I still have a few characters that I could use. But I'll say this is good here. I'll click Tweet. Now all my zero followers saw this. But as I get more followers, and they, and they, uh, as I try to build more followers, and they preview my account, they will see why would I want to follow Victor's Bakery. I'm going to tweet one more thing. Well, actually, let's say I was about to tweet, but the cat walked across the keyboard, and whoops, I accidentally tweeted it. Okay, I tweeted that. I, I don't want that, actually. Twitter, at the moment, does not allow you to edit your tweets. If you posted something, it's there. They will probably let us edit it at some point. But since the beginning, 10 years ago, you have not been able to edit your tweets. The closest is, on your tweets, you've got this little More button. Well, on every tweet, you've got the More buttons. But on your tweet here, More, you have some options. The one for the moment to look at is Delete Tweet. You don't have Edit tweet. The closest that you can do is, let's say you spent a few minutes crafting the perfect tweet, you tweeted it, whoops, it had a misspelling. The closest you can do is delete the tweet and post it again and, and spell check. Only your own tweets. Nope. Mm -hmm. um, Facebook 
is and Google Plus are, are a couple of the networks where you can really control your message. Someone's trashing you on your Facebook page, you can delete it. Someone's trashing you on Twitter, you can't delete it. Um, so I'm going to tweet something else. I can instead tweet media. I can attach a photo <coughs> or a video. If I've got Twitter on my phone, I can record a video at that moment to upload. On the website, I have to choose an existing video. But if I've got the app, it's a free app, free download from the App Store, at that moment you can record a little video, I believe it's 30 seconds long at most, and attach it directly to your tweet from your tablet or phone. But here, I have to select one. <coughs> For practice, I've got a couple of pictures you can use, sample pictures, because you can actually attach up to four pictures, a little gallery. So I'm going to select media, and this is okay, attach your picture or your video, and there's a few pictures on all of our computers on this left panel, if you scroll all the way to the top, pictures, sample pictures, and I'm going to select the koala. So I've attached the picture. So this is what I'm saying. Again, you're not limited to just text on a tweet. We can attach a picture, four pictures. But notice, though that picture subtracted a few of your characters. So I had 140 characters. Now I've got 116 characters. That took 24 characters. That picture took 24 characters. So I've only got 20, I've only got those 116 characters left to to tweet. But the good news is I can attach another picture that doesn't affect it. I can attach up to four pictures and none of those four pictures take up any more. <coughs> I can attach up to four pictures to my tweet and it still only takes 24 characters. Meet our mascots, carry the koala, and the penguins. Oh, Victor, oh, that's fine. So again, I'm not selling anything to them at this point. I'm posting something fun, something different or interesting. I don't always have to tweet something about the sale. Here's just something to look at. I have 65 characters left, but I will tweet it. And again, all my zero followers are going to see this, but if someone comes across my profile, you can always preview that, remember? You can click on your egg view profile. When someone visits my profile, this is what they'll see. They'll see my logo, my cover graphic, my bio, a preview of photos, my tweet here with that photo, and these other tweets here. And so I'm going to be tweeting. And I recommend three to five to ten tweets before you try to get followers. Put some amount of tweets out there to the world before you try to get followers. Three, very minimum. Five or ten, I recommend ten. But five is good. So five tweets about your company, different things that are related before I start to try to get followers. Location is disabled, but if you click that, it'll activate it. And that's more effective on a mobile device because our mobiles have GPS. So let's say I'm at the shop on Main Street. I take a photo of our, of our amazing birthday cake. I, I snap a photo. I attach it to a tweet. I also attach location. It'll then attach a map to my tweet. So if someone wants to come to the bakery for them to buy their own tasty birthday cake, and they're on their device, they will get a map to my location to go to my store. So location could be useful if you've got a physical location. My, uh, 
my box doesn't show you that uh, extra. Any of what? Um, I have, when you slimmed it down, how did you expose this? You click on, on that and that should open it. You can also, at the very top right corner, you've got that tweet button. That should also pop it up in a slightly different way because you weren't, you weren't ready to, to do a tweet yet. You were just looking at it, so you needed to click on it to start the tweet. The other thing that I can attach is um, a poll. This could be fun. You could ask a question. What's your favorite donut? Poll. Um, chocolate, rainbow sprinkles. Let me see how many options do we have. We have four at total. What's another one? Yeah. Butter cream. What's that? Jelly. Jelly. So you have up to four choices. Select it on or off. And then I'm going to tweak that. And again, all my zero followers will see that. But as I get followers, they'll see it and they'll be able to vote. The polls only last 24 hours, however. Um, a person doesn't necessarily have to follow me to vote, which might be good or bad. Depends on your account, I believe. But we can attach photos, video, location, polls, and links. It's not obvious from here. There's no button to attach a link. But I could say, visit our shop sale for the next you know, six hours. And then I add my link. I can copy and paste it. I can type it if I know it. Tweet it. And now my followers would see that tweet with a link. The link itself takes up space. I forgot to show you, but it takes up... So I, I write something and I add an address. It takes up some space. The good news, though, is that, is that um, link could be 400 characters long. Every link automatically only takes up 23 characters. So I could have yahoo.com slash help, help me slash really help slash now.html. Notice how I went further and further and further address, but it still kept that 23 characters on my link. And I can add multiple links. Each one will take about 23 characters. You can have multiple links on a tweet. And so if I've got, for example, here our latest recipe, pecan pie. And I've got victorsbakery.com slash blog slash pecan pie, whatever my address. If I don't know my address, I do have to I have to go find I have to go find my address, copy and paste it. I mentioned earlier we've got a company, pmdinteractive.com. Under the company address, we've got a blog. So I can copy my address. I can copy the address of this particular post, how to build an Android app. So that link, I can copy it. I can paste it into my tweet. And that will become an active link so that when someone sees my tweet, they can click the link follow it and go back to my website. So perhaps they will add a button eventually here that says add link. At the moment we have to copy and paste our link or if you've got it set up properly on your website, your website itself can have a button to tweet. I, this is out of the scope of this class to show you how to do this, but on your website, especially if it's like a WordPress website, one of the popular ways to build a website. If you've got a website, you can attach the share buttons to your content so that someone can quickly share your content. You've probably seen this all over the web. You read a great article, there's these tweet buttons, 
you can click the tweet button and it'll automatically create the tweet for you. You just have to tweet it. So if your website doesn't have a way to share on social media, you're missing out. That doesn't mean you need a Twitter account or you need an Instagram or whatever. You need a way to let people share your stuff on their Twitter, on their Facebook. We can't get to that in this class. That depends on your website. But if your website doesn't have a way to share, you need to figure out how, that, how to do that and let people share. That's how you can get more traffic to your website. I can attach a photo and a picture at the same time. But I can't attach all three and a poll. If I don't have pictures, I can attach a poll to the link, but then I can't attach a picture. So either or. So a tweet is not just limited to text, it can have pictures, it can have links, it can have polls. We can have video and sound as well. Let me show you this. Most video sharing sites out there have this ability to share a video. I'm going to go to YouTube. I'm going to search for a pecan pie recipe. Pecan pie cheesecake? Wow. I'm going to go look at that. Caramel pecan cheesecake. Wow. So I'm going to go to that video. Any video on YouTube by default, unless the person changed it, has the ability for you to tweet their video. I know the question earlier was, can I, can I tweet other people's stuff? Yes and no. Like I said, not always other people's stuff, mostly your own stuff. But just an example here. I want to tweet what's Cooking Girl's video. Um, because on YouTube, the default is right here. Share. Share it on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Plus, blah, 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 by default. A person can turn that off. And if they turned it off, most likely they're giving you the hint, don't share this on Twitter. But here I can select, I'm going to share that video to my Twitter. It pops up, it pre-populates it for me. It simply took the name of the video, the link, and it said it came from YouTube. I can edit any of this. This is on our bucket list. Tweet. So I tweeted someone else's video. It went over to my Twitter account. My company Twitter account. All my followers would see it and it's attached directly on the tweet. They don't have to leave my Twitter account to watch the video. They can watch it directly from my, from my tweet. So for you, I would recommend you also want to get on YouTube. You also want to create a YouTube account and upload videos. You don't have to create a 30-minute video five minute video 30 seconds can work one minute yes you mean other people's YouTube videos on your YouTube account I would highly recommend against that that's the one place that you should put all your original content don't ever share other people's <coughs> stuff on YouTube it just doesn't make any sense to do so on Twitter and such, yeah, you can share other people's content to, to just show something interesting. But on your own Twitter, really, you should be posting your own original content always. And that is a big endeavor. Not all of us are video editors and such. What's that? Well, we can talk during the break to see your specific needs, but usually you're going to be sharing your own particular content. And I do want to mention to people, um, we are not going to get to Twitter. Uh, we're not going to get to YouTube in this class. There's no time. But I'm teaching a Friday Google class. 
this Friday, I'm doing the YouTube lesson. So if you want to enroll in that class also, it's free. It's, it's this Friday. We're going to talk about YouTube. It's at 9.30 a.m., 9.30 to 1. Uh, the class will be offered again at another time if you can't quite make it. But if you've got a Friday open, 9.30 this Friday, I'm doing the YouTube lecture. So you can share videos on uh, YouTube, I mean on Twitter. You can also share sounds. Like let's say you want to get into this, this fancy thing called podcasting. Have you heard of that? Podcasts? Podcasts are basically radio, uh, internet radio shows. They can be live or they can be pre-recorded. But thinking in terms of how can I use every social media to my disposal, I could create a blog, I mean I can create a podcast for free that once a month I do a five minute interview on some of the names, some of the big names in the baking field. Maybe I can interview my chefs once a month, a five minute podcast episode. And the way, the place that you would save those, one of the places could be SoundCloud. SoundCloud.com is basically the YouTube of sound. YouTube is for video, SoundCloud is for audio. You can put your album up there, or it, like I'm saying in my case, a podcast. Um, you can put your podcast episodes here, and then share it from here back to Twitter. I have a podcast, my own one, not related to any of my business stuff. One of my hobbies is comic books. I've been reading them for a long time and collecting them. I've got a podcast here. And so here's a podcast episode, and I've got share. Share it to Twitter. It already filled all of this in. I can change it how I want. I'll just go ahead and tweet it. And now, let's see here, have you heard the comic book commute episode 8 by Liam Campos? And here's the sound, and they can hear it directly from the tweet. So the thing I can say honestly about any of this social media, it's not hard, it's time consuming. That's why there's a full-time job, social media manager, social media guru, social media ninja, whatever you want to call yourself. And if you're already busy running your company, and now you've also got to tweet, and now you've also got to Instagram, and now you've also got to blog or podcast, yes, it's a form of advertising, marketing. The smart companies spend some amount of money and time to put a billboard up, to put a radio ad, to have the guy out on the street spinning the sign. It's all marketing to get you to buy your product to know about your restaurant, etc., etc. Social media is all that, but digital. Tweeting, Facebooking, Instagramming, podcasting, it's all advertising, marketing. It does take time and effort. The more you do it, the better you get at it. Or if you decide, this is too much, I've just got to run my business, I'll hire someone. Great. Hopefully still, these classes give you an education and a knowledge to know that when you hire someone, they're doing something effective effectively, because anyone can purport to be a social media manager. But looking at their portfolio and how they manage it and such is your indicator to be to tell you how well they'll manage it for you, how effective it'll be for you. And I'll show examples of our clients and such, but it does work. Every time we post something on one of these social networks, I can check with the owner of one of the restaurants, and he can say that in the cash register that week, he sold more of that soup because we tweeted about that very enticing looking bowl of soup and it enticed people on these cold winter days to go buy that soup. So a tweet could result in a sale. Not always, but the more followers you have, the higher probability of that. And since I've been talking and tweeting and such, I, I have three notifications. I don't know what they are. They could be spam. But I'm going to check them out, and hopefully they're safe for work. But I'm going to click it. 
Let's see. Bargain leak liked my tweet. Okay, whose bargain tweet? You can uh, look over a per you can click you can look at a you can hover your mouse over a profile and it'll give you some quick stats. You can also click on it, but bargain leak. The best deals and discounts of the day. Learn about the biggest savings and price glitches before anyone else and even make money reselling at RRP. 39 tweets, 174 following, 86 followers. I think this is a little less spammy than this one because all that they did was like my tweet. They didn't say, hey, please follow me. Their particular business perhaps really doesn't align with my business, but they didn't go as far as annoy me by tweeting at me by, with something irrelevant. Any one of these accounts, when you preview them, you've also got that follow button. What else? Audrey Hoff liked my tweet. Um, if you're, if it's one of you students here, cool. If not, I don't know anything about them. They have a, they have an icon here that appears to be women's clothing. Over here, no graphic, no bio. One tweet, no enticement for me to follow. YMSN ADM Media followed followed my account, so I've got one follower right now. When I tweet, this account could see my tweets. So there you go. I'm on my way to building that million followers, a little bit at a time. I could then decide also to follow back. SoCal-based media press relations, content editor, former N1-based translator, educator, lifetime. This is a very good, so far, an account. I don't feel it, it is spam. They are trying to get me to follow them, better yet, for me to hire them. They see that I'm some brand new struggling company of a bakery, and they're reaching out to me. I do social media, I do marketing, hire me. They didn't exactly say it that way, but I could be enticed to follow. I could furthermore click, let me look at the tweets. You can look at everyone's tweets. This was the question, how can I see my followers? I can see it on this screen and on another screen. I'll show you in a moment. But I can then click to, to view their tweets. Again, if you're in the class right now, I don't want to embarrass you. <laughs> but um, I'm going to look at the tweets. It seems to be kind of cool stuff I might want to follow. There's the follow button right there. I could unfollow later. I had one more notification pop up at the moment. Another follow right here. So I know this account. I know that it's a good account. I could follow that account. I could check out what they're about. Uh, web designer offering web support and redesign. So this is a tactic that people do, that they, that they uh, follow an account to get a follow back. How did he find out that I exist? That search, and we'll look at that in a moment after the next break. But again, I could look at the bio, I see that it's properly filled in, I see that there's some content and followers and such, I could go further preview the tweets, I could see that this is interesting, useful stuff, I could then choose to follow. Now when I go back to my home screen, the tweets of those accounts that I'm following are going to show up here. This tells me I've got these followers, they're going to show up here. So I can also see my followers from that screen. Now that I have followers, I have a brand new stat. I didn't have that stat before because I had no followers. As I get followers, I can also look at them there. So as a beginner, we want to engage in some tweeting to no one, because then eventually um, when someone visits my profile and sees my tweets and decides that's interesting stuff, I will click follow. This time, let's say I'm over on my notification screen. This time I'm going to click the Tweet button. Two ways to do it, either from the home screen or anywhere that you're at. You might be at Settings. 
you'll always have that tweet button. Slightly different screen, but same concept. What's useful to tweet also is, let's say, this time I'm going to tweet just a sort of a question. Um, have you had a great cookie filled day? Hashtag cookie. Hashtag. That little hash mark. The pound symbol, which is on the keyboard shift three. Hashtags. You've heard of them at least. You've probably seen them. You're watching a movie or a trailer for a movie, and then it says hashtag the grudge part 12, hashtag saw, hashtag whatever. You see a hashtag for a movie, for a TV show, for a news channel, for a product. A hashtag is, a, is an active keyword for your tweet. It takes up space just like any other text. But what it is is an active link. It's better to show you and then explain it. I'm just going to tweet this for the moment. I'm going to put hashtag cookie, and it's saying other stuff there. Just ignore that for the moment. And I'm going to put a keyword onto my tweet, a hashtag. I'm going to tweet it. The purpose of this is when someone sees my tweet, that's an active link. It's clickable. This other text is not active. This is active. When I click on that, this is then going to show me what everyone on Twitter is tweeting about with that keyword, with that hashtag. Two hours ago, that was tweeted. Um, two hours ago, etc. January 11th. So all of these people that are tweeting, all of these companies, all of these accounts and companies that are tweeting and using the hashtag cookie, they're all kind of linked together. We're all kind of in the same conversation about cookies, little cookie. Cookie, hashtag, and cookies, hashtag is different. But all of these are linked together. The point of that is that when someone is on their Twitter account and they search, there's a search box in Twitter which will only search in Twitter. This doesn't search the whole internet, just Twitter. And someone searches hashtag cakes. Every tweet that has that hashtag could appear here. The top tweets with that hashtag live, so the most current tweets with the hashtag. Accounts that use that hashtag. Photos that have that hashtag. Videos that have that hashtag. So when you use hashtags and someone searches a hashtag, your tweet could show up. This was posted seven minutes ago. If you attach a few keywords, a few hashtags to your tweet, people could find your tweets. People could then follow you. You might say, great, let me put in 12 hashtags. No. At a certain point, it's spam. At a certain point, you're trying to reach too many people. You're going to look like a spammer, like this one, sugar-free, for any occasion and size by order. Hashtag bakery, hashtag cake, hashtag cakes, hashtag Columbus, hashtag flour, icing, no sugar, Ohio. I recommend up to three hashtags. Further than that, you're starting to look like a spammer. If you can get it across with one hashtag, great. Two, good. Three, you're getting to the limit. Four, you're a spammer. <laughs> so. Maybe the maybe Nanaka Bakery is not a spammer. Maybe they're great people. They just don't know the etiquette. <laughs> that more than three, you start to look spammy. If I hover over Nanaka Bakery, we create amazing cakes and pastries featuring vegan, gluten-free, eggless, sugar-free, and other specialty cakes. We are located in West, uh, Westerville, Ohio. 2,000 tweets, 91 following, 42 followers. I want to further look at the account. They're leaning towards spammy. They're not... I don't think they're using it as effectively as they could. They've only got two pictures. 
this big wall of text looks a little boring, way too many hashtags, I don't see any videos, I don't see any polls, I see them either doing it very lazy way, or maybe they are a spammer. Um, so I'm going to move on, I'm going to go over to flower. I like to look at the live view so that it shows the latest tweets with that hashtag. And some hashtags are going to be overrun by spam, unfortunately. Um, that's not how you spell flower. And um, eventually, maybe you'll see some accounts. Who's for thought? Healthy five minute breakfast ideas. If I click on their account, it's a kind of basic account as well. Let's just say, for the sake of argument, this was a really great account. I could click follow. It might, su it might suggest to me other accounts to follow. Again, if you follow an account, some of them might follow you back. I have no statistic to tell you what the percentage is, but it doesn't hurt to follow some accounts and some will follow you back. There is a limit because Twitter doesn't want you to go into a follow frenzy of 5,000 accounts in the hopes that you're trying to get 500 followers. There is a limit. I believe it's 200 per day. We can look it up. But if you're following 200 accounts per day, and that's all that you're doing, just following, Twitter is going to think you're a spammer. Because you're not posting, you're not contributing. So that's that balance. Post interesting stuff, follow some accounts. Tomorrow, post one more thing, follow a few, a few more accounts. Next week, post another thing, follow a few more accounts. Build an audience that way through follows. But more effectively, build in a, an audience by um, is when you tweet, use hashtags. And notice here on the left side, trends. These are some hashtags that are going on. So to? What's so to? The State of the Union address. The State of the Union address. 1.6 million tweets on that. People are really tweeting about that. It's the president's last. State of the Union address ever. Um, what else? Ask Crystal. I don't know what that is, but I can click on it. It's got 197,000 tweets. All the tweets will show up here again. Hopefully, safe for work. Uh, but I can get in on the I can get in on the conversation by tweeting. I wonder if Crystal likes pecan pie. Ask Crystal. So now I'm part of the conversation. Other people that follow that hashtag will see my tweet. If I put in a very, very tasty photo here, it might not just go unappreciated. Does it, does it matter if you put the hashtag in the end or the beginning? Nope, doesn't really matter. Notice this one is right at the beginning. Mine, I put it at the end. Doesn't doesn't really matter. Let's take one more break, and when we come back, we'll talk about other effective ways, a little bit more effective ways to get followers. Because just simply following might not always give you best results. We'll come back, we'll talk about other tactics. It's 8.36, we'll be back at 8.46, and we'll further learn more about Twitter.